Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, I am glad uh, that you joined us today. And today with me is Lev Yakupov, uh, our Chief Marketing Officer. And uh, we are going to share with you a lot of new things. Uh, just recently, uh, we finally uh, released the True Conserve 5.0. It's available on the website. So if you didn't know about that, you're welcome to download it. And together with TrueConf Server 5.0, there is an, a new application, 8.0, which is, again, available on the website in the download section. You can find there all different platforms for, uh, as usually, supported for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. And we are going to cover some of the features which we uh, announce that they are going to come and uh, show you what uh, what makes this uh, this version so special. So to start with, uh, we finally uh, did a synchronization of all devices. Now you can have uh, an access uh, to all different devices, to multiple devices from a single account. And uh, just right now, I connected. I'm connected from my account, and I have it also on the phone. Uh, and you can uh, join from different devices, and and you will see the same chats and files, and everything is stored on these client applications. So that's uh, make a big change. Now we can announce that uh, we finally made a complete messenger application. Uh, Lev, let's go to the uh, next one. Uh, yeah, so just cover a little bit of the functionality of the messenger. Uh, now uh, you can uh, you can have a group and personal chats. Uh, and when you, you are sending something in your chats, for example, media, you can go to the menu of the user and you will see a separate files. You can see separate uh, pictures and, uh, and chat history. And also, when you uh, are using the chat messenger, you can edit, you can reply, you can forward these messages to all other users. And finally, we have that in uh, in the new client application version 8.0. And also, you can tag uh, your colleagues, you can tag other users if you want to mention them during the chat conversation. Um, let's go to the next one. Uh, regarding the chat management, uh, you can delete the messages. You can delete it uh, for, uh, for, for a person, or you can delete it completely from the system. And uh, there is a special group uh, chat management where uh, you can see all these files. Uh, you, can, you can go to the group chat info, or you can jump to, a, uh, uh, to the same files from, from a user. If you, go, if you click in the client application on the chat, in the menu, you click on the chat, and then you uh, you select the menu from there, and you can go to the same menu. Uh, so the big difference is the UI, uh, which we have over here. And another uh, feature, which, which is mentioned here, is one of my favorites, because you can do a bulk actions on multiple messages. And uh, not many uh, users found it that uh, if you click on a number of users immediately from the address book, you can uh, make an operation of a group of users that's extremely, extremely uh, user friendly at the moment. And uh, uh, Lef is just now showing that you can select like this. This is very, very simple, and you can create a conference with them in a in a seconds. That's uh, that's very nice. And uh, by the way, we uh, extended the number of supported uh, languages. And there are, of course, plans to add even more. Uh, just within a month, I think, there will be added at least two languages at the moment. Uh, and uh, some of them will be uh, from right to left. At the moment, uh, uh, still a lot of languages supported, but we are extending the list of them. And let's go to the next uh, next slide is regarding the tracking of the message statuses. And uh, over here, you can see that uh, we've added uh, actions for each message. Uh, now you can see if the person received this message, if, if he saw the message and or the message was edited. You can see all of that. And uh, also there is full emoji support. 
uh, it look the application looks totally different at the moment uh, when you compare to the version number seven. Uh, now you can also search for messages, and uh, also you can view the chat file storage. Uh, you can go to specific message. You can uh, play much more with the history of the chat. So a lot of functionality added to this messenger. And uh, another benefit is that you can do much more features from this messenger. If you uh, go to the conference menu, you can uh, schedule a conference directly from the client application. You can see the scheduled conferences from there. Uh, because if you compare it to the version which we had uh, uh, in our previous version, you had to do some of these operations from the server. Now you can see all of this right here in the conference, in the menu. Uh, and you you can not just create a conference, but you see this menu with the scheduled conferences. You can see uh, the calendar over here uh, and uh, all the information. By the way, all this information, you can even, as an administrator, add it uh, so your users will, will get a better picture for the help uh, and how to uh, connect over there. By the way, uh, we have another uh, new quick guide, which is very nice. And uh, if you would like to read about it uh, or share it to others users, just feel free to go to our website, website to the knowledge base and find it in the getting started menu. You will see this uh, PDF uh, with very clear uh, information and all the features uh, explained uh, over here. Um, okay, and now let's go to the next one. Uh, another very great uh, functionality which we added are statuses. Now we have much more of them. We had, of course, some statuses, but uh, now it's extended. Now you can see if this uh, message, uh, if the user is from the desktop or is it is he from the mobile application or maybe he is from the uh, from the terminal from the SIP or H323 terminal. And uh, you can see this green, uh, first three green uh, lines. You can see the online status for the desktop. Second is from this uh, for the smartphone and tablet. The third, the third one is for the uh, codec, for, for the terminal. And uh, there is also uh, another specific status, uh, which uh, is uh, marked at the moment. And this one means that the user uh, is authorized in the mobile app, but it, uh, the application is currently not running. So just uh, not long time ago, he was connected from the mobile application. This is something new. So it's important to explain what this status means. Also, uh, there are more statuses. You know the status, which means uh, uh, that participant is owner of the of the conference. This is a star. The message, uh, the status, which is right now uh, purple over here, marked away. Uh, that means that uh, the user is automatically set after some period of inactivity. Uh, and the default value is 15 minutes, and you can change that. And uh, we have also a status which means do not disturb. Basically, that means uh, that uh, you uh, you get a message, uh, uh, that you get a call, but you are choosing if you want to respond to it. Um, and there is also a status which is called busy uh, in a video call or conference uh, and uh, offline, of course. And uh, you can see all of them here. Um, so basically, it's much more convenient. It's much more user-friendly. You can remember the menu was on the right with the addresses. Uh, and over here in the user menu, you can see the connection status. I'm at the moment, I'm uh, recently active because I just closed my application probably on the mobile device. Uh, so if I go back uh, to it, let me check. I'm I'm actually connected from a few uh, different devices, so I'm not sure uh, which uh, which user I'm using at the moment. Uh, uh, anyway, over here updated, you can see Rodolf, uh, you can see him. already updated. Okay, yeah. good. So th this one is probably from Team. Yeah, you can see that Kotler at team.trucom.com, uh, and I'm on the phone. 
So that's much more clear. You can see all of the users if they are connected from the phone or from the uh, from the SIP device or from the laptop. Uh, another very great functionality, which uh, a lot of our partners uh, wanted to see in the TrueCom server, is the is the dashboard with all different kinds of statistics, and uh, you can see here the uh, CPU. Uh, statistics you can see here the network statistics you can even see the space uh, how how much is used over here um, and you can change the dates you can change it uh, to to view it for today or for for last three days for example or last months three months is year uh, we try to make it as simple as possible and to make it uh, very user friendly again so this is a very big change for the client application itself. And now we are here moving to the uh, server side. Uh, here, Dev is showing the network. We can uh, we can see the media traffic over here and, uh, and select uh, all different dates. Uh, so Thank you. That, that's regarding this slide. Yeah, thanks, Lev. Maybe you are going to continue for, for the next slide, right? Uh, thank you, Rodolfo, for covering the most uh, important updates from user perspective. Uh, but uh, today's update is more about uh, new features for system administrators. So I'm going to cover the next slides about the features for the administrators of our system. Indeed, uh, the first thing to uh, show you uh, the one the, the one thing we updated in the dashboard uh, in the control panel of our server. It is a new dashboard which will allow you to. Uh, quickly check the health status of the server. So you can see the load, the number of users, the number of conferences, the amount of traffic being sent or received from to or from multiple network interfaces on your server machine or virtual machine, and some other important stuff, just to get a very quick overview of what is happening. And the old dashboard is still here. It is uh, located under license info tab. Uh, nothing changed here. So, uh, I'd like to uh, show you some uh, important things we uh, added recently. So uh, actually, it was a big surprise for us with Rudolf uh, how uh, that they are already done, that they are already available for our customers. So first thing uh, is the pin protected conferences. Uh, so it is. Possible. That was actually a real surprise because uh, yeah. we expected the pin, and I just found it because we received so many requests regarding pin, and finally it's there. And uh, I even wasn't sure for the first time that it will be in 5.0. I expected it to have in 5.1, but we tried our best really to add all of the important features to this version. It is. Uh, actually, uh, if we look back to the previous year, uh, it was a big difference between our previous release, which happened exactly the same date last year. In the beginning of 2021, we released the version 4.7, the previous major version of our product. Uh, and since then, uh, we first of all released during the summer the beta version of our server for key customers uh, collected a lot of feedback uh, the beta version was also available for our beta testers we have approximately 300 300 beta testers in our community in telegram so you are free to join if you wish uh, and we accumulated a lot of feedback and the pin protected conferences was uh, one of the top requests along with some other features and we're going to um, make releases more often because now uh, with the new platform new major version being released we're going to add more often new versions with more features uh, because it, it was a very long and difficult period for us uh, we needed to update the server we needed to update our protocol we needed to update databases we needed to update client applications for desktop and for mobiles uh, Android version is going to be released very soon. Uh, the beta version is available. iOS uh, also support all the features you are going to see today. Uh, and with all this new bunch of server uh, capabilities and client applications, we are ready to go forward more quickly and be more responsive to the requirements of our customers. Uh, one thing to mention regarding pin protected conferences is that at this very moment, it is possible to enter the pin code only from desktop applications or from browser application. I mean, using WebRTC application. If you are going to 
protect the meeting using pin code and somebody, uh, one of your participants is going to connect using mobile application, uh, he will not be able to join. So please pay attention to this. We're going to fix this very soon, just maybe a couple of weeks and App Store and Google Play will be updated with the new version which support pin codes. But right, right now uh, we caution you uh, to be careful with this. Uh, and another thing, it is not possible to send the pin code in the invitation. So if we have a look on the templates, our server is being uh, is sending to the participants of the conference. Uh, I changed this server is for Russian language. Sorry for that. So there is no uh, parameter, no uh, way to add pin code to the scheduled conference invitation. Uh, because if you share uh, the pin code along with the conference link, this is not secure. So we are all about security. So you have to deliver the pin code somehow uh, using a different method. It could be email or it could be personal message in the messenger, whatever. Uh, it could be a true kind of chat, uh, but not in the invitation. Uh, next thing. Uh, it is quite complicated. Very few people actually complain about, but for complicated uh, deployments where we have uh, DMZ and our server is located um, not inside the network. And when we have a lot of connections from uh, legacy equipment, uh, it is sometimes required to route all media traffic, SIP traffic and free to free traffic through a specific gateway. So now it is possible to route uh, the legacy uh, connections for a specific gateway and from that gateway it will be then uh, redirected to our server but that should be set up uh, should be set on that uh, specific equipment um, if you don't understand don't worry uh, sometimes when we see issues with SIP and free to free devices our technical support team uh, has uh, extensive knowledge about this protocol and they will be able to easily help you. You have to be sure that all possible scenarios with calling and invitations and joining uh, legacy equipment meetings and MCU meetings are supported by our product. Another big update, and this one is important, uh, especially if you host large meetings. Let's say if you're going to uh, schedule a conference for more than 50 participants, they're going to create a big mess uh, with their microphones upon joining the meeting. So now it is possible to mute every new participant in a session immediately once they connect the meeting. So you just need to click these checkboxes uh, when you're planning a meeting and they, uh, their microphones or their cameras will be disabled or muted. And of course, you can do the same. So for example, if I go to the our application, I can also do the same. I can mute everybody. Uh, no point to mute attendees. They are not presenting, uh, but I can disable their microphones as well. Uh, so this feature is also available in the application for the hosts of the meeting. Okay, uh, we also added uh, the location field for planned uh, meetings. Uh, it is useful when you are going to join uh, some physical room, the meeting room to the conference, and you are, uh, wish to tell your uh, parties where this uh, conference room is located, in which building, in which floor. So it is now possible to add some additional information about meeting location. Some minor thing, but for large organizations, it turned out to be quite important because they have hundreds of rooms and they get lost uh, every day between them. So basically that, that's an additional information which can be found in the help menu when, when users connect to the conference, right? Exactly. So if I go to the conference info, uh, so we, we can add some descriptions and now we can add the location and that location will be added uh, to the calendar invitation as well. Uh, so uh, we try to make sure that nobody will get lost. We also added two new layouts. Uh, those layouts are only available when you uh, manually control the layout of the meetings. So all uh, layouts to the left, the old generation layouts are available through the client application. So we can uh, go through them using this menu so we can uh, 
I don't remember where it is, layout settings. Yeah, so we can change the type of layouts over here. Uh, but if we go to the manual, we call this advanced meeting control. So in advanced meeting controls or during the scheduling of the conference, uh, you can create those specific layouts. Uh, we I expect you, you might see them on the TV. They're quite popular nowadays. Uh, this is how they look like. So we have uh, two people on top or one person in the middle of the layout. It is recommended to have for this layout at least 13 participants. Otherwise, there will be some spots uh, in the layout. And it, it, it scales. So it could be, uh, as I remember, 17, 21. So they fit perfectly for such a number of uh, participants. However, if you're a layout freak and you'd like to control the how your conference look like, we uh, recommend you to try to come for MCU solution, which has way more uh, layout controls uh, and they are automated. So you can create very uh, advanced scenarios with layout using MCU. While IntroConf, uh, the idea at IntroConf server, the idea is to allow every user to change his layout and to allow users to do whatever they want to do with the uh, layout. However, uh, some basic things can be done using advanced meeting controls. Uh, we finally added the display of the users' photos and avatars uh, to our transcoder. Transcoder is a part of our server which provides compatibility with legacy equipment like CPA free to free endpoints. Uh, it is also used when you connect to the meetings using WebRTC. I believe some of you are connected using our uh, using the browser. So instead of uh, empty uh, empty spot uh, for me when I will, when I stop to share my content, you will see my avatar. So this is quite useful, especially for the recordings. So you. Uh, still see who we are speaking with. And I uh, like to remind that uh, we also have uh, a way to hide people who disable their cameras in the layout. Uh, so Rudolf, can you please disable your camera for a moment? Sure. So uh, it is a special mode in the new version of our application. So do not display non-video participants in the layout. Uh, this is my self view, so uh, it will be displayed anyway. However, if there would be other participants in the call, uh, we will see only those participants with videos. So empty screens, people without with cameras disabled. And nowadays, a lot of people disable their cameras. They are not going to use the real estate of your conference screen. So you just need to click here and they will be hidden. Uh, Rudolf, could you please enable your camera again? Okay, this is how it works. And I'm back. Okay, so more flexibility and more convenient for users. Another thing, <laughs> it is quite complicated for many users, but uh, we finally added a way for administrators. Please pay attention to this. Administrators, they are now able to manage meetings remotely without being inside the meeting. So if we go to the control panel, so for example, I will locate our ongoing conference. This is our conference, uh, so webinar server 5.0. So I can go to the real-time management. Uh, it doesn't matter if I am inside this call or I'm not inside this call. We also updated the interface uh, for this uh, advanced control panel. So it, it could be accessed from uh, from the application as well by moderators of the call, but moderators has to be inside this call. So there is no way for a moderator to control the meeting remotely. He has to be inside this call to access this panel. However, server administrators are able to access this anytime for any meeting. And here we can control layouts, participants, uh, microphone sensitivity, we can change uh, devices uh, and do many other important stuff. For example, I can enable the camera for Constantine. <laughs> I'm sure he is not willing to do this, uh, but uh, it is also supported for more than one year by our protocol. So now it has very uh, versatile and convenient uh, controls, which can be used on mobile phones 
and on uh, the in the application and the, on the desktops so i will close this window and go back to the slide deck uh, it is also now possible for hosts of the meeting to access this conference manager uh, from the personal area uh, every user has the personal area in his uh, on the web page of our server so it is for hosts they can also control the meetings remotely yeah yeah the new responsive ui for the meeting it is useful uh, for pretty large meetings so for regular meetings for less than 100 participants it, it is okay to use our, our interface it's uh, it can easily be used for hundreds of participants because we have a search and a lot of controls uh, upon any member of the call any any participant but for uh, sometimes uh, it's uh, not enough and you'd like to have a specially designed control panel for large meetings for layout management so that's why we offer these advanced controls in a separate window or within the application it is available in the application here uh, real-time management window yep we can create layout ah we have a role-based conference so <laughs> i don't have a lot of people on screen here but that's how we usually use it okay let's cancel next thing uh we updated the process which guest users uh, follow to join the meeting so uh, it's not about the new updated ui we're going to update the ui for the conference pages uh, in the next release uh, even more seriously but the idea here is that uh, the new protocol uh, guarantees that any user you send a link to the meeting will join the meeting it was available before but right now he will uh, understand what is going and we maximize the chances chances he will join correctly uh, doesn't matter on which uh, corporate server he is authenticated. So let me explain. So first of all, uh, there is a browser button. We do not recommend it anymore because browser experience is limited to a WebRTC protocol, which is pretty limited, which uh, uses a lot of resources on the server machine. And it doesn't support all the features of our protocol, especially all the new features Rudolf just uh, told about, uh, and the new generation of our application, application eight, it's not available in the, in the browser. So we advise to use a native application all the times and the thing changed here is that when you click on this button first time uh, we try to understand who you are on your local server because our users they usually have a true Home server application installed and which is usually connected to the corporate server um, not a cloud and we try to bring a bridge we try to create a bridge from the user's server who click this button to the server where this conference is being hosted because usually we receive a conference invitation from remote servers so we try to use federation feature and we try to connect using this federation feature they are currently authenticated in the application user to the, to the remote meeting if federation is not allowed between those two servers we display this um, button which is uh, if you have installed the application but unable to join the conference please click this join button and this join button is a fallback protocol uh, in most cases it is not required but for some reason if there is no federation between servers because in in, in our world uh, usually customers they communicate with the friendly servers using federation between different uh, public organizations or different branches of the large organizations so they usually federated uh, they they have a kind of public cloud solution and th this is what we called enterprise uh, but if there is no federation uh, when you click this join button we try to authenticate you using your installed application on the remote server as a guest and we will in this case we will use the name uh, you enter it here as a joe door for example when you uh which you select when you join the meeting and another option is a very new one so uh, before we asked every user who doesn't have our application to download our application our application is pretty large it's approximately the eight version is 
80 80 megabytes this this, this is a lot uh, and to download 80 megabytes for every uh, remote user uh, it creates a lot of load on your server uh, and it is uh, not required uh, it shouldn't be required when you join through conf meeting for the second time for example so we created the launcher launcher is a very small application launcher is less than one megabyte less than one megabyte it is only available for windows right now what launcher does it uh, checks if the true conf application is presented in the system if it is not it will download our application in the background it will actually install the application of course uh, user confirmation will be required to install the application this is the same way other vendors do like webex or zoom where you have to also uh, you have to confirm the installation of the application but after that this launcher will automatically authenticate you on the remote server where the conference is scheduled and connect you there so it it uh, there is no way to get lost so the launcher controls everything you just click this you just run the small application and it will done everything rest so we make sure that any user will connect to the meeting and for mobiles there is no changes uh, we uh, also offer for mobiles uh, the transparent switch to the google play or app store and once you install the application from the app store uh, it will connect to the meeting automatically but for the windows machine it was a pain and now it is handled by the launcher application and of course if you have application installed already the launcher will not download it again so it will save you bandwidth it will tell the installed application where to join and how to join we also added the qr code uh, not the one we use to enter restaurants nowadays the one which is uh, simplifies the way to join the meetings so uh, this uh, code uh, can be used uh, for example if you'd like to join the meeting from your mobile device uh, so you can uh, open on your laptop on a desktop uh, the conference page scan the code and you will be connected using a mobile application uh, and we encode here the information about who you are uh, if you put the, the guest name there so which server to join so everything is there so uh, you don't have to worry are you the user of the remote server where the meeting is being held we will make sure that you have been connected and notificated as a guest using your mobile application on the remote server and when you're done conferencing we will return your mobile application state back to your, to your local server this is magic and it happens automatically Another update is important for our German users. So we finally added a way uh, who, uh, which is which allows to upload custom documents. Let's say cookie policy, privacy policy, terms of use, whatever. So you have to ask your lawyers what you'd like to have on the guest page, and those links are being presented here. So if we enable them in the control panel, actually I don't remember where they are. Just let me check. Yeah, here they are. So we can enable cookie notification like we uh, we have to we use cookies because we have to remember who notificated on the guest page and we have a control panel for the users and we can also add and enable additional uh, documents uh, but you have to uh, create them we do not offer any templates for the documents here we are and now uh, this information is displayed that would be probably very important for 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 a lot of europe countries i see here bjorn from ztm hi bjorn so may, maybe this is also something uh, important for for your projects exactly uh when the oh, hello bjorn <laughs> nice to see you um when you offer uh a conference uh link to someone basically your true server acts as a service for this remote user so you have to tell remote users how you're going to protect their uh personal data how you're going to treat them how you use cookies this is required by law which is gdpr in europe uh, in russia we have it in, in other federal law in some other countries it is uh, uh, available under different names but we, we try to make this flexible so you can adjust the names of the every file and the content so you can be sure that uh, all local regulations uh, will be met this is how it looks like so we have cookie policy privacy policy terms of use whatever okay um what else we also added oh by the uh, way pictures are supported 
wonderful. <laughs> right. So someone is using it already. Is this correct? Mm. Right. Okay. Uh, we also add a way to add additional information on the guest page. So uh, I don't remember where is this button. So if you go to the settings, uh, you can create a huge document about uh, the rules of your server, how you're going to uh, control the meetings, who are able to join, whatever. This is inf this information is public if your address of your server is public. Uh, so you are able to edit it. Because before, uh, we only showed the contacts of the administrator. But now it is possible to upload a big document about how to work with your server, some additional information for guest users. Uh, so it might be useful. Again, we, we did it because we received such requirements. So we strongly and specifically follow the requirements we receive from our customers and partners so don't uh, be shy and tell us everything uh, you'd like to have we uh, listen to you very carefully okay uh, next slide yeah this is how the help let's click on the help yeah test this is how this information is being displayed uh, pass through for the chat messages uh, was added when you invite uh, or make calls to TrueConf MCU. TrueConf MCU is a transcoding mixing server, software server for legacy equipment for Poly, uh, for Poly, Cisco, Tanberg, Yearlink, whatever, SIP and 33 endpoints you might have. So we recommend to use it for uh, legacy equipment. Uh, and of course, it is possible to invite TrueConf users to MCU meetings. And now we pass through the messages. It is not possible to send the message from Cisco endpoint. However, uh, people in the room uh, who are using Cisco endpoint or Polycom endpoint, <laughs> they will at least understand what's going on in the, in the chat because there are meetings like uh, today's meeting. We have uh, only a few people visible but a lot of things going on in the chat. Uh, we don't have many questions right now, but usually during large meetings, during role-based conference, there are a lot of uh, listeners who express their opinions in a chat. And before those messages, those opinions uh, was invisible for SIP and free to free endpoints. But right now it is uh, mixed on the MCU. We do not mix this in the server. So we have to use TrueConf MCU to mix chat messages into the picture. So please pay attention. So if you just call SIP endpoint, no pass through for the chat messages will be available right now. Maybe we will add it later, but right now you have to call the meeting uh, on TrueConf MCU to uh, have this feature. Uh, okay. And if you authenticate on the conference page as the owner, uh, right now you will be able to edit the description of the meeting so no need to go to the control panel no need to go to the uh for system administrators to the administrator control panel so every host is able to edit the description of his meeting right uh directly on the conference page so we have a edit button and save button there there are some more more features. Not all of them are here. Uh, the change list is huge. Uh, the problem is we didn't translate it so far. So if I will show you, uh, it will be available shortly uh, next, uh, I believe this Friday or next Monday. So if we go to the Russian page, I will show you the change log. So there is a lot of things, a lot of things updated in this new release. You see how many of them. So if you had, any problems, any uh, bugs, uh, or requested some features, please uh, connect with, with your manager, change this, or uh, wait for, for, for a few days to receive the full change log for this update. It is huge. So we're going to release it shortly. Um, mm -hmm. So, and the last thing, uh, there are a few pitfalls when you are going to update from the current version of Token Server to the 5.0 version. First of all, please strictly follow the steps uh, described uh, in, in our uh, guide. Uh, uh, Dimitri, could you please uh, send the link to the guide for upgrades? So you have to install step-by-step -step all previous release version of TrueCon Server. So if you have 5.5 version of TrueCon Server, you have to install 4.7 uh, because we upgrade the state of your server uh, 
we guarantee the uh, clean and nice update only from the previous version, not the previous previous version of the application. So you have to be precisely uh, step by step with previous versions. Uh, it is also possible. It is also important to contact your manager when you update because uh, when updating to the new version, uh, we reset the hardware key. It looks like uh, you changed the equipment on your virtual machine or your dedicated machine. So the server didn't start. So you have to plan the upgrade on the time when nobody will use it. And you uh, have to previously ask, it shouldn't be done in real time. You just tell your manager, I'm going to update tonight. And don't worry, we will put a special checkbox for your license and you can after that you can update anytime it will go smoothly just let us know it, it is done because uh, free updates for the new version is only available for our customers who has one year licenses uh, but for lifetime customers who bought the lifetime license free updates are only available during the first year of the license so if you are using our product for more than one year you have to uh, purchase the even the most cheapest, uh, most of affordable support plan. And with support plan, you will il be eligible for the update. And the most saddest pitfall, uh, because we totally updated the protocol, the chat messages from the 4.7 versions are not supported. So after the upgrade, all chat messages, uh, which was stored on your, uh, on your endpoints, Chat messages in the previous versions were stored on the desktops, on the mobiles. Uh, only copy of those messages were held on the server. So they will be deleted. So there is no way to save chat messages. So uh, this is important. Uh, and updates for the five version where chat messages allocated in the database on the server, uh, they will be... Uh, uh, they will be affected. So version 5.1, 5.2, whatever. So uh, chat messages will preserve because we just moved to the new protocol and new platform. But for the previous version, uh, it is not available. That's it. No more slides here. So let now we can accept the the questions from from everyone. Yeah. Sure. Let's have a uh, have a look on the questions. I will. Scroll Let's back check, to the first check slide. The chat. <laughs> okay. Here we are. No By questions. the way, hello for those who joined us not long time ago. Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. We, we also have a community. That, that, that's a huge update. That, that's a huge update for, for this server at the moment. And uh, we have a lot of information in the blog. Right. There, there are also a lot of articles related to the new uh, release, which just came not long time ago, and also regarding the messenger. And uh, there's a community on Telegram, right, which which you wanted to mention, Lev. Yeah, correctly. So uh, the community turned out to be quite successful uh, for our CIS audience, and we created the same community for our global customers. So uh, it is in the Telegram. Uh, my colleagues will just send link to the chat. Uh, so you can ask any questions there uh, because uh, we have a technical support team in this community we have our product team in the community so we are ready to hear for your feedback and meanwhile you are thinking for the questions i will show you some new features which are going to be added with the new version of the application because i'm currently using the next version of our application which is not released yet so uh, we added recordings so it will be possible to uh, browse the recordings and play back them inside the application. So before you had to open the Explorer, the file manager, look for the recordings, use a third party player for the recordings. Right now, no need for that. All recordings will be uh, saved there uh, inside the application. We will also uh, add support for PDF. Uh, I'm not sure if I uh, showed this before, but it is possible to process any PDF files I don't know if I have any PDF files. Oh, I don't know. Let's check. I hope this PDF file could be shown to you. Yeah, some documentation. So we can convert it to the slide deck uh, immediately. Uh, okay, I will stop this. Yeah, we have a question here. Mm -hmm. uh, 
from uh, Bjorn from ZTM that uh, mm -hmm. we released uh, TrueConserver 5.0 for Windows, but uh, there is no TrueConserver 5.0 for uh, Linux at the moment. So there is a question if there is a version for Debian already available. This is a great question. Uh, thank you, Bjorn. Uh, we are going to offer the beta version, beta, not released version for the Debian and other Linux distros uh, in the beginning of the March, or maybe it will happen in February. So right now, uh, only version for Windows is being released. Uh, actually, it was released last week. So. Linux version will come a little bit later, within one month. We expect it to be available after the beta. So pretty shortly this uh, winter, it's going to happen. Maybe in the beginning of the spring. Uh, and uh, guest 3873, yes, you can upgrade from 4.7 because there is no, uh, we decided to, uh, we decided to skip versions 4.8 and 4.9 because with a lot of new features available in our platform, we decided to skip all these versions and and name the new version 5.0. Uh, so it will be easier for us and easier for you. And we did it before when we switched from free version, third version of our server to the fourth version, and now we switched to the fifth version. So 4.7 is the latest release. Uh, before 5.0, so you can upgrade from that version freely. There's one more question from Gast6274. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, you can write down your, your name. Um, maybe we know you. Uh, and the question is, did the screen sharing uh, change, probably the logic of it, in server 5.0 and client 8.0 compared to the previous versions? Mm -hmm. Uh, we changed the logic of the content sharing. I think I covered this uh, in the previous webinar about the new application. So uh, now when you share your screen, we provide priority for the resolution and not the frame rate. So when you share your screen, uh, when the channel is not sufficient, when we have connection issues, we will drop frames, I mean frame rates. So from 15 frames per second, we go to one, two frames per second or five frames per second, but we try to preserve the resolution, the clarity of the content. However, when you are not capturing your content and you're capturing your camera, it is vice versa. We, we, we try to, first of all, we try to decrease the resolution and preserve the frame rate. Uh, it is updated, but actually it was done in 4.7, not 5.0. So uh, nothing more uh, was changed in 5.0 version. Uh, and there is a very popular question. When we will be able to capture the audio from captured content? For example, if you'd like to capture the YouTube video and show it to your participants with the audio. Right now, uh, we do not capture audio, but the next version of our application uh, client application uh, version 8.2 will offer this so we are almost done this feature so that will be a big improvement for content uh, capturing process there is another question if we have a version before 4.7.3 when is the limit date to update if there is a limit date <laughs> no limits no limits you can use uh, it how long you wish to you'd like to use it. However, if you face uh, some critical issues, they might arise one day. Uh, we do not provide any guarantee for the previous versions. Our support team will ask you to upgrade to resolve those issues you might face. But most of our customers, uh, they have a huge inertia. So they, a lot of customers still use version 5.3, 5.5. So uh it is pretty safe to use old versions but again we, we recommend to update we try to release very polished very stable versions of our product because we know once it was released it will be distributed uh, it will be quite difficult to update production systems which usually are not connected to the internet so every version of the conserver is pretty stable Okay, wonderful. We got some questions. Um, guys, uh, if, if you have some more questions, you are welcome to ask. If not, then we hope that he, there is another, there, there are a couple of more questions left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, the first one is uh, from uh, Clement. 
from DEC. Uh, is version 5.0 back compatible? That means can users with all their clients join? It is. The, the, uh, yes. hello, 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 Clemen. Of course, uh, all versions are back compatible. So, however, when you join the seven version of our application to the new server, uh, you will not receive new features like messaging, new new statuses. So, we recommend to update to the eight version, and vice versa. When you connect eight client application to the four version of our server, to the previous version of our server, uh, the eight application the new application will lack uh, messaging features but uh, you will be able to join meetings use all the old features of trueconf like role-based conference podiums messages uh, content sharing whatever uh, apmx oh uh, when do you plan to release version 5 it is already released so if you go to our website uh, so you will download the new version and from uh, hubert there is uh, another hubert. question he, uh, uh, he's writing, I saw that via WebRTC, it's possible to share content plus sound. <laughs> this is something new. I, 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 I never thought about I never thought about it. So maybe because uh, when we talk about WebRTC, this is not us doing the internal stuff. It is a browser who is uh, providing us with the content and audio. So if uh, Google added this feature, so we also try to implement all the latest versions from Google. So maybe, I, I never tried it. So maybe it is already available. It's possible at the moment through the plugin. Wonderful. So this is very good news. Uh, Ariel. And uh, one more. Actually, thank you for the question for API. API lives a different life. So API has a different versions. And we, uh, I will show you, we maintain the back compatibility uh, at least for two years back with our API. So if I go to developers.trucam.com and I open server API, you will see that uh, it's not updated yet actually. So we're going to update this page. Uh, so the version 4.5, which was released in, in 2020, and version 4.7 released in 2021, uh, share a lot of common interfaces. So we try to maintain the back compatibility for all API calls for, for at least two years. And some versions, like version 3, is back, back compatible for three years already. So the new version, uh, which was released along with uh, the new server, is of course, uh, will be compatible with all previous version. So if you have some code which invokes old version of the API, you are safe. Uh, only version 2 and less is deprecated. So please pay attention to this page. So if you're using v3 in your addresses for API calls, you are safe. But I recommend to update. <laughs> maybe once every two every two years you have to update your code so we try to maintain as much as possible but a lot of new features are being added to the api every release okay so that, that was already a great motivation today to to update to the latest server so wonderful uh Thank you for your time. Uh, we uh, strongly recommend you to try the new version. So ask your managers for trial, for uh, update, whatever. So we, are, we will go uh, in the direction to you to help you to try all the new features. So the next big updates will cover, uh, I will uncover some things going on here. So we're going to update the licensing policy a little bit to make it more flexible, more convenient. Uh, and we are going to provide updates quickly as i said before so please stay tuned if you are going to visit a mobile world congress in barcelona in march or integrated system europe in may again in barcelona we will be there so we'll be happy to meet with you guys um, that's it uh, thank you for your time and please be safe nowadays we... if you come up with more questions feel free to contact us on telegram channel and thank you for coming up today have a nice day and enjoy video conferencing. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Rodolf. Uh, and have a nice day. Everybody. Thank you, Lev. Goodbye.